Okay. Good morning, everybody, um, and you are very welcome to this special event on EU in Education and Exchange. My name is Emma Murta. I will be your moderator for today. Uh, I'm the European Programmes Manager with The Wheel, which is the National Association for Charities, Community Voluntary Groups and Social Enterprises. Um, the Wheel is coordinating this event on behalf of the European Parliament Liaison Office and the European Commission representation in Ireland, both of which play a really vital role in connecting Ireland to the EU policy uh, that impacts our everyday lives and in promoting active participation in EU democracy. Um, this is a goal that is very much shared by EU programmes at the wheel, where we aim to promote Irish community involvement in EU programmes and policy. Um, so we were really delighted when the Parliament Office and the EU Commission representation approached us a few months ago to, um, to organise this event and to collaborate all around EU in education and exchange. Um, the Erasmus programme uh, that many of you will be familiar with is, is really the main vehicle for this in Europe. Um, and today we will learn all about this extraordinary programme and how it is driving growth, jobs, social equity, active EU citizenship and a real shared sense of European identity, uh, while also leading on digitalisation, inclusion and, and the overall modernisation of, of education in the EU. Um, over the last three decades, more than 10 million people have participated in Erasmus Plus or its predecessor programmes. Um, and so it has had a monumental impact on Europeans everywhere. Uh, a 2018 Erasmus Impact Study revealed that those, of, that, that those who have studied abroad um, are less likely to experience long-term unemployment and that participation in Erasmus study programmes increases job prospects for young people. Um, this program provides accessible, the Erasmus Plus program provides accessible transformative opportunities for Irish students and young people, um, as well as those active in other fields like youth, vocational education, adult education. Um, and we are lucky in Ireland to really have fantastic um, contact points and agencies uh, driving EU participation in, in various programs, including Lergus and the Higher Education Authority, who we'll hear from today. And yet Irish students, young people and learners um, are not fully engaging in the opportunities available. Um, and so this is what we're going to explore today and hopefully open some minds to what is available um, and how we can make the most of these opportunities. I want to really thank all of you for, for being here today um, for this special event and especially the European Parliament Ambassador Schools who are joining us from classrooms around the country today. Um, participants are invited to say hello in the in the chat box there. Uh, let us know who you are and where you're tuning in from today. Uh, and we'd also encourage you to join the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag EU and education. Um, we will have time for some questions later on during um, our panel. But for now, let's just have a quick look at our agenda for today. So uh, Deirdre Clune, MEP, has very kindly agreed to kick off our session today with a short keynote address. After that, we have Jerry O'Sullivan, Head of International Education at the Higher Education Authority, to share some insights on Ireland's engagement in, in EU education programmes. Um, then we have our panel. Um, so we have Giorgio Guazui Marini, Deputy Head of the Erasmus Plus Unit in DG Education and Culture. Deirdre Finley of Lergus, the national agency for several Erasmus Plus strands in Ireland, um, and Neve Lynch, a Trinity student who completed her Erasmus year and is now vice president of the Irish branch of the Erasmus Student Network. However, before we get started um, on, on all of that, um, I wanted to play a, a short video from Minister of State for, for Skills and Further Education, Niall Collins, who couldn't join us today, but wanted to send us his best wishes for, for this event. So I want to just, I'll go ahead and play that now. Good morning, I'm Niall Collins, Minister of State in our new Department of Further and Higher Education. It's a new Department of State, which is dedicated to the um, whole area of further education, higher education, research, science and innovation. It's a very exciting time to be in this department because there are so many moving parts to it and really contributing to learning, 
is of vital importance. So I want to wish yourselves well today in your deliberations. I'd like to thank the European Parliament Liaison Office, the European Commission representation in Ireland, and of course the WHEEL for organising today's event and discussion. And just to reinforce the message that Ireland um, fully supports the ongoing work in our education relationship with the European Union. It's of vital importance. Um, naturally, our flagship programme is the Erasmus Plus, which I'm sure you will be discussing today. It's really so important to the here and now and to the challenges into the future that we will face. Um, the fact that 62,000 people have already um, engaged in the Erasmus Plus programme and have upskilled and benefited themselves and by extension our country and our economy is um, a testament to everybody who's involved and shows the importance and the significance of it because we face so many challenges not least with Brexit but um, with the, the whole wider globalisation agenda which is ongoing. So the government and this department are committed to um, continuing our support um, for these programmes. We're, continued, we're continuing our support and our collaboration with uh, the European Union and in terms of seeing how we can deepen and broaden any engagement which we can, which ultimately will be to all of our benefits. So over the next um, number of hours in your session, you, you'll hear from a number of speakers who will have valuable contributions to make. But just from my part as a, as a minister in this new department, which is solely dedicated to uh, the space between secondary school and the workplace and preparing people uh, to enter our labour force and to prepare people for their careers. I want to wish you well um, on my own behalf and on behalf of um, Minister Harris, of course, and indeed the government. So thank you for taking the, uh, giving me the opportunity just to make a short address to you at the start of today, today's deliberations and the best of luck. Thank you. Great. Um, and a big thanks to um, Minister Collins for that lovely message. And it certainly is really heartening to hear about the commitment that government has to collaborating and, and aligning with EU programmes in education. Um, so moving on now, um, I'd like to take the opportunity to, to welcome um, and to introduce our, our keynote speaker for, for today, uh, Deirdre Clune. So Deirdre is a member of the European Parliament for the constituency of Ireland South, having been elected in 2014. She's a member of the Parliament's Internal Market and Consumer Protection Committee and a substitute member of the Environment, Public Health and Food Safety Committee, the Subcommittee on Human Rights and the Special Committee on Beating Cancer. So thank you very much Deirdre <laughs> for joining us um, and over to you now. Great, thank you very much. Thanks, Emma. And uh, good morning, everyone, uh, wherever you are. Um, it's a, a Thursday morning, where everybody's, I'm sure people across Europe, I'm actually based in Cork. I haven't been traveling to Brussels for, for well, since March because of uh, COVID, but I think um, Zoom calls certainly bring us together. And it's, it's great to see that so many people are um, tuning in today and welcome particularly to the Ambassador Schools Programme because I think that's a, a very valuable programme in um, trying to get, get to know Europe, understand it and just, just engage with it a little bit if you can in your time in school and thanks to all the teachers involved in that because it is, it's, it's, it's gaining momentum now and it's certainly proven to be a very successful programme. So good luck with that and uh, thanks to The Wheel for organising and to the European Parliament Liaison Office, Dublin, and the Commission, European Commission as well. Uh, it's great to have this opportunity to focus on one item, a very important item, um, education, and the role that the European Union plays in education. And certainly Erasmus has been said by previous speakers, by Minister Niall Collins there, is one of the um, most successful uh, programmes of the European Union. Uh, it's been in place for over 
30 years now, give you great opportunity to travel, to gain new experiences and to broaden horizons, apart from the education value, which is really, really important. And when it started out first in the 1980s, it was only 3,000 of about 3,000 students uh, benefited from it or used it or, per, 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 or partake in the, in, the, in the scheme. And when you think of it at that time, you know how difficult travel would have been. We didn't have, um, well, hopefully we'll get back to it, but uh, Ryanair, EasyJet, uh, flights that you can get easily across Europe and interrail, all that has changed so much. So uh, they were very brave at that time heading off to, to engage in their education in another country, different culture. Uh, but it's grown and grown from that time and to become a very uh, successful, successful program providing, and, and you're going to engage in it, I know this morning, the opportunities to study traineeships, apprenticeships, and higher education in the vocational education sector as well. Um, and it's, it, it, it's um, you know, the, originally it was 11 countries, and now it's up to 32 countries to, uh, engaging in it. And of course, all the European member states. So it's great, up, and you know, it's an opportunity not for students, but for teachers, for staff, and for trainees, uh, and for volunteers as well, which is a very important aspect of the programme. So, um, and, and you know, what, I th what strikes me about it is that there's not many Irish students, not as many as we could availing of it. Maybe that's, um, down to lack of knowledge or uncertainty what it is and it's also I think um, the fact that we don't engage as much with Europe as other countries because of our geographical isolation we're you know that step further away um, and it makes it it makes it more more difficult um, maybe not as open to to uh, European studies or to availing of the uh, and interacting with what we call the European project so from that point of view, I think it's, it would be great if we had more Irish participants because, um, you know, we need as a, as a nation to engage more in Europe, uh, to talk to our neighbours and to um, become, to understand their different cultures, their different backgrounds. In many ways, we're the same and we do have our differences, which makes us, which makes us special, I think. So it's a, from that, so it would be good if we could see more Irish uh, engaging in it and I'm sure, um, Jerry will expand on that in his um, in his contribution. So it, Europe doesn't really have a role in education, as has been said. It's a matter for the member states, very important matter. But it does so the, through the Erasmus program. It's able to um, uh, coordinate a response and engage with with students, particular uh, to uh, to learn and to develop to uh, benefit from training in other European countries. Um, so um, I know that and that's been mentioned already of the commission in, in May this in May 2018 uh, published a, its program for the next Erasmus, which will be uh, with at the moment engaging in budget discussions in Europe. Uh, Europe is we have funding programs over seven years. So the next round of programs will be 2021 to 2027. Uh, that's next year, or it's less than less, less than a month now. Twenty twenty one and engaged, so it's going to. Um, so the the next program is intended to contribute to the European education area, and we look at the whole area to twenty twenty five as well to promote mobility and to consolidate. But we want to consolidate and reinforce the European identity. We are Europeans. People say to me, "Oh, you're going over to Europe uh, for your work." I mean, we are in Europe. I am in Europe. We all are in Europe. Ireland is part of Europe. I think, as a in our psyche, we need to to um, kind of absorb that. So the next program will be focused on um, more European identity and um, integration and understanding, as I say, of um, uh, of, of our neighbours and what, what they're what they're at. So it'll be supporting language learning, development of digital skills, which is becoming more and more important. And I know this is that word can kind of be a turn off of people we all use digital item we're all on a digital and a screen at the moment we're engaging digitally with our phones so you know it's and it's going to become more important for, for the next uh for the world that you know those young people are going to be working in and engaging in so uh and um you know there's a whole new knowledge area that's going to require training and understanding and and the whole area of climate change as well is something that's going to have to be ingrained and incorporated into our education so 
by traveling and by engaging in the, the Erasmus program, um, there's an opportunity uh, to learn more about this. I, I'd be asked to mention about funding. I have uh, slightly touched on it. Um, the MFF, the Monty Financial Framework, has, is due to be agreed. It's not agreed yet, and we're running out, running out of time um, because of COVID and the necessary funding uh, to address that. There was a proposal um, to cut that in July. However, the European Parliament object, uh, objected strongly to uh, cutting Erasmus because we understand the value of it. It's, it's a very, very valuable for today, but also in the future, if we're to build relationships with our European neighbours and to understand them and to uh, create Europeans that can work together. So it's not just uh, an isolated educational instrument. It has a broader uh, appeal and a broader value. So we were very strong on that. And um, uh, just this week, uh, uh, it has been agreed that the programme would be um, funding to that area would be extended. Um, so we we're yet to see, yet to see the detail of how that filters through. So I would say budget negotiations are still a little bit up in the air at present, but the, there has been a pushback against any cut in the Erasmus budget because of, of, of its importance, particularly now when we see Brexit and a very strong European country and player leaving. So, you know, um, European identity and, and creating that European identity is um, is really, really important. And uh, we, need, we need to keep it and make sure it's, it's not that the funding isn't cut. So we look forward to hopefully an agreement before the end of this month, and that along with Brexit on, on, the, uh, on the budgetary programme. So um, I just like to really say from a, apart from funding and detail and everything, just uh, from a personal point of view for anybody who is considering it or would consider it, it's a very um, valuable experience to travel. It gives you a, uh, a, a means of living and working, and studying in another European country with a bit of support, well, financial support, absolutely. But also, you know, the institutions supporting you. So you're not on your own. You're not just turning up, uh, looking for a place to go, looking for a place for training. You have that support. So it's really, really valuable. And um, as has been said, it's, um, it's it's what, what it, it it improves and uh, level of employment employment uh, options for employment as well uh, ability to learn another language and that's something we're going to have to really uh, focus on in Ireland because we speak English comes so easily to us as our, our first language English and, and Irish we learn in school but we're not so strong on the uh, what we call the continental language Spanish German French and others. Um, and it amazes me when I'm in, in, in Parliament uh, that ling English, every country has English as a strong second language. Uh, we don't have a very strong second language as, as, as a nation, I think, which we can, can converse. So from that point of view, language and learning is really, really important. And it's a lifetime experience. It's something that you will that will be with you for life. It's I've read many reports and listened to students. I know you're going to need later on speaking about is her experience. but. Um, the friends that you make, your th you, um, the acquaintances, friends for life. Uh, there's some, sometimes I love, love stories begin on, on, on Erasmus and, and can last as well. So, uh, and that's not the only reason for going, but it's certainly from a personal point of view, it can be very enriching and great fun and a wonderful opportunity that um, students and those who are available have for a lifetime. So um, from all that point of view, you know you're, that you've the uh, uh, um, the opportunity that Erasmus offices offers is something that um, should be would be available. If it wasn't there in my time. I would have had it the, if I'd had the opportunity. I certainly would have taken it, and I'd encourage anybody who can uh, to do so. And I just th I think today's um, webinar will give an opportunity that to, to you know to ask those questions to understand it more because it's just a word to many people. Erasmus, Erasmus Plus, but today's event is certainly going to. Uh, give you an opportunity to ask questions, uh, sharpen your awareness and hopefully whet your appetite uh, to, to inquire further and to engage in the Erasmus programme. So good luck everybody in your deliberations today. Um, I wish, wish you well in it and I'm sure it'll be uh, really informative and um, of benefit to you all. Camila Mangriff. Great, thank you so much for that Deirdre. Um, 
really, really interesting to hear, I suppose, the Parliament's perspective on it, how much they obviously value the programme um, and, and I suppose the, the strength and the power it has to reinforce that European identity along with, you know, enhancing education. So thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Um, thank you, Emma. And um, yes, so we look forward to the rest of the session now and we'll move on to our next speaker. So um, our, our next speaker is Jerry O'Sullivan. He's the head of the international, of international programmes at the Higher Education Authority, uh, which leads the strategic development of the higher education research system in Ireland. Jerry oversees a number of international programmes, including Erasmus for Third Level. So Jerry, when you're ready there, you can you can fire away. Good morning. I uh, hope I have, you're hearing me loud and clear. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Emma, and thank you to The Wheel for uh, inviting me to this morning's presentation, uh, very relevant, very topical uh, presentation or, or opportunity to talk about Erasmus. Um, you mentioned at the outset, there are huge um, challenges, huge opportunities for education in this area and, and the expectations are high and that is uh, just and i your mep uh, uh, reiterated the point that the european union doesn't have a direct role in education yet there are huge expectations in this particular area of erasmus and there are developments that are happening on the european stage i think that may well change that in in the coming years uh, I hope to talk today a little bit about who the, the basic who, when, where and what of Erasmus and I won't uh, dwell too long on some of the slides uh, so that maybe I can allow great uh, greater time for the attendees in a, in a huge audience this morning who might like to ask some questions. But um, as um, Deirdre said, <clears throat> the Erasmus programme began in 1987 and from the outset Ireland has had a connection with it. We were one of those first uh, countries to take part in the programme, and it was introduced during the tenure of an Irish commissioner, uh, Peter Sutherland, albeit that it wasn't his particular idea, but he was very supportive and anxious and keen to ensure that this activity would get across the line. And it didn't get across the line that easily in its first years. Um, you, you might be surprised to, to know there were con considerable objections across European states at that time. But it made it. And what its most um, known facts are the, fa are the fact that it uh, supports mobility of students and staff uh, across the member states of the Union and some others as well. And it provides for a, a period of study in a university in a member state. And it also provides opportunities for people uh, to work in European companies uh, and so on. Coming down the track, though, there are significant changes in the new programme, which is, of course, paused at the moment while the uh, impasse between the UK and the European Union uh, struggles to reach a finality. And hopefully that will reach a positive conclusion uh, by the end of the week, albeit that the, the deadline has been shifted a few times in, in the course of the last number of months. And it wouldn't be beyond the bounds of possibility that it could get moved again. But one of the most um, exciting innovations in the coming program is that it will be possible to do mobilities of five to 10, 30 days within certain formats. That I think will have a significant impact on Irish participation, which is growing, but the, the budget of course is uh, um, not adequate to support uh, everybody that might like to go. And we are again addressing some of the, the barriers to inclusion, which is a key feature of the next program. And we do that in our role as a European national agency. And like Lergus, there are uh, two, um, our, our sister and national agency, there are two agencies in Ireland. And the difference is we look after the higher education space and Lergus look after the other areas uh, across the various different education and training sectors. And that isn't uncommon in most other European countries where there are those uh, additional agencies to um, address the needs of the sectors. The one thing I would like to get across immediately is that all our higher education institutions in the country, publicly and pri privately funded, are in the programme. But what isn't certain, of course, is that every educational course, every degree programme is in the uh, a particular uh, activity. But that is something that you need to address 
and establish, establish in uh, the institutions that you would like to attend when it comes to you filling out your CAO form uh, in whatever format the admission to higher education will be in the coming year, given that we had um, a very different model, not based exactly on um, leaving cert results this year. And given the time that uh, we're at, that's ahead of us, it again could be the possibility that the model used this year will be the model used next year, unless we have exited the, the pandemic by, by the coming summer. Um, as Deirdre just said, over 60,000 and then uh, staff have come, have, co have gone from Ireland, 100,000 people have come in. And we were on track in this year to reach about 4,500, but that has been decimated because of COVID. And our return to kind of normal figures, I expect will be delayed in the coming year as well, as we're still suffering from the impact of the, of the pandemic. We are still in a pandemic, which has been uh, in place since 12th of March this year and shows no immediate signs of being lifted. Barriers to um, our discouraging international travel is very much the norm at the moment, as we know from this Christmas period even. And again, it would take some time for that to actually change. But one positive thing that we have uh, uh, uncovered in recent times though, is that there's a greater level of equity in the participation in the program. Um, we have topped up the normal monthly grants for students on the on the higher education grant uh, offered and provided by SUSE. So that nearly now 20% of those that go abroad are on that grant. So you come, if, if you think that maybe uh, the financial barrier is too much for you, I would remind you that, I'd like to remind you that we are addressing the, the issue and topping up the support for grant holders so that uh, roughly now uh, a student on a, on a SUSE grant will get about 500 euro to go uh, to one of the European destinations. And since our 87 participation and thereafter, we have grown to, to the level that you can see and that trajectory has been very much on an upward curve. Um, what do you do? You get full academic recognition for your course. So it isn't an addition to your degree program or anything like that. You do not have to sit additional exams. You do not have to um, have a longer duration or anything like that. And you do not have to pay additional tuition fees. You get the monthly support, which is around three to 400, rising to over maybe 500 for students on the SUSE grant. And if you're uh, receiving the SUSE grant as an adjacent student, imagine for the moment if you're going to, uh, you're living in Dublin and going to a Dublin college, you get the adjacent rate. But when you're moving to Europe, you can shift to the non-adjacent rate because you're no longer adjacent to the college that you're uh, attending. So that means you get a higher support. And if you happen to have a, a particular disability or challenge in that area, there is additional support to help with the additional costs of the mobility there as well. So as I said, the, one of the key points I would like to make is that for inclusion and for uh, participation in the program, there are supports for students who may have particular extra needs in that area. At the moment, there are 26 other member states of the European Union. We don't know what other um, participation um, possibilities there will be for the UK. Uh, at the moment, it looks like they're heading out completely uh, from the programme, but they, the matter could change in a day or two future of that uh, country's participation will become clearer. And that's something we would welcome, uh, kind of the continued uh, participation of the UK, because it's the single largest destination for uh, our students who go on traineeships, those who go for placements in companies. More students go to the UK than any other. If they're out, it means we have to find uh, alternative locations for those students to go. And in addition to the member states, those countries that are part of the European economic area and have relationships with the community are, are also in the program. The rest of the world is also in the Erasmus program, but it's a very different model, but a very well supported model. Uh, the, the funding for that is different and it's greater, but uh, colleges in Ireland have to compete for the various funding budgets. The world is drawn into different regions and there are possibilities to go elsewhere. 
but uh, it is not the same model as has been built up over the 30 odd years with the rest of Europe. Um, we manage the process with the colleges, as I said, uh, and I would go back to the point um, that Deirdre made in her presentation that uh, there is no reference to the European, in the European Treaty, the Treaty of Rome, to education, which is remarkable. But at the time in the 1950s, when that was being established, the driving forces of economic activity were coal, steel, energy. Today, if the European Union was being formed, it is unimaginable that education would not be at the core of it, because now in Europe, and particularly a developed economy uh, uh, like the European Union, the largest in the world with over five, nearly 500 million uh, people living in it, and highly advanced part of the world. And the European Union recognizes that. And when I said at the beginning about new opportunities for education in that space, two significant things have happened in the last couple of years and since 2017. Uh, one is the development of the European education area, and that includes all areas of activity. It hasn't been given a great detail at the moment, but the idea that the heads of government would have imagined that we need greater uh, education collaboration across Europe uh, is very, very important. The structures haven't followed yet, but that may well come. And you can just imagine uh, looking at the Irish composition of our population at the moment and the changing nature of our schools, that um, when uh, for all our history up until recent times, English people, British people made up the second largest population group in Ireland today, it's Polish people. And that's come about because of our membership of the European Union. If you go into the classrooms in Ireland today, they're very different to the ones that you and I would have uh, attended in, in years gone by with many students from other backgrounds and some are native born Irish people now and their parents would have come from another member state or indeed maybe further afield. So that's presenting its own uh, challenges to the Irish educational system and we have to respond in that area. A second area of innovation in the European Union programme at the moment is the universities alliances and that is about getting European universities to collaborate and cooperate in a much more structured and cohesive manner. Driven in part by the uh, Brexit because European higher education, Britain has massive European uh, universities or some of the highest ranked universities in the world and a history of research in, the, in that country, a very leading power in that space. But it may not be part of the European education area in the future. So Europe needs to strengthen its hand in that area if we're going to compete with the likes of USA and other universities in Asia and in places like Japan and China and uh, Korea. And Ireland's, Ireland's uh, educational system is e expanding and uh, rapidly changing as well. And among the reasons why we would want a greater involvement of our students and staff in this area is to support the government's global engagement strategy. We have a diplomatic presence in many countries in the world, but not everywhere. And education is one of the areas where we can extend our reach beyond that particular area of public activity. Education is also part of a partnership building, and we need those particular partnerships in the future, if even more so now as our uh, economic activities is uh, threatened because of the British departure, we need to step up our game and reach out to the world to expand markets and to build, I suppose, join in global networks of expertise. We're a member of inter 80 international organizations at this moment in time. And for the first time in our history, we are going to be in an organization called the European Union, which the UK will not be. In every other international organization, I would suspect the UK is also a member. So that shared space that we have enjoyed over our history is changing uh, in a very significant way. Um, up until or pretty much since the beginning of 2010, when the government first published its in first international education strategy, uh, student recruitment uh, from overseas has been very important to the Irish uh, education sector. But I think we need to go beyond that and embed a, a, a sense of global inter relationship with our universities and institutions of higher education with others externally to enhance the quality of the education experience. Higher education has to be challenging. Going to Europe is, 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 is a challenge in itself. 
it is not a major challenge anymore because we travel globally and young people are, are known to travel all over the world. Living and working in another European country, you're in, in among the most best educated, the best accommodated, the freest systems with the best health care and the best education systems in, in the world. And to be part of that is, is worth uh, in experiencing in your education. To build not just your skills and your competences and your language uh, abilities, but to get that sense of global fitness. How well are you equipped for the Irish labour force and indeed to be a citizen of Ireland and Europe in this, at this time in, in, in our history. The European um, Union and the Erasmus programme has listed many other um, ambitions of the programme. Some they're better able to attain than others. Um, inclusion will be important in the next programme. And as you can see from our work, we're working uh, ahead of the, the posse there to try and make it more inclusive for Irish students or students in this country. There are some of those activities that uh, the European Union's Erasmus programme may not be able to make a significant uh, impact, but the fact that they are being listed as objectives of the European Union um, is significant, significant in its own right. So <clears throat> I would like to conclude and say like, it is a wonderful opportunity to, to join with fellow Europeans uh, at an important stage in your education and personal development. It brings added skills to your um, CV when you go looking for, for a job. It is about empowering you as a citizen of Europe as well and uh, sharing that um, um, and contributing to it uh, when you are a student in another country with students from all over Europe and indeed further afield as well. But it, it, it is also, I think, about bringing a, a sense of what we are good at in this country to the greater knowledge of the wider world. And I think we will continue to do so in the future and um, support from Europe and indeed at the national level from Ireland will, will be needed in order to make that happen. So, thank you very much for listening to me and I hope I, I'll be able to answer any of your questions that you may wish to, to pop. Thank you, Emma. Yeah, thank you very much, Jerry. Um, we'll actually we'll come back to questions at the end of our panel. So, um, yeah, we, we, there'll be plenty of time for questions later. But um, thank you very much for for your input there and such an excellent oversight of the opportunities and the objectives of the of the program within Ireland. So, um, Jerry, I'll ask you if you can stop share your screen there because I just have um, a short. Um, I suppose, um, to contextualise what you spoke about um, and to bring it down to a more individual level, we thought it would be nice to, sh to share this kind of short video that was created by the European Parliament. Um, uh, it tells the story of Pascal, who is uh, who uh, was from France and who spent uh, his a year in Ireland during the very first Erasmus exchange. Um, and I suppose the this was in the 1980s, and I suppose the impact that that has had on shaping his life. So it might, you know, tie together what Jerry spoke about there in terms of the objectives and the opportunities and what's being done at higher education, and I suppose to the personal impact that it has. So I'll play that for you now. Um, yeah. Erasmus permet d'éduquer, peut-être à évoluer dans, dans, dans une sorte d'ouverture. Je suis européen, je suis français, je suis irlandais, je suis allemand, espagnol. Je se construis en tant que père, en tant que mari, en tant que, en tant que chef d'entreprise et, euh, et j'en suis fier. J'ai eu la possibilité de faire un échange pendant un an. Je ne sais même pas que c'était euh, via Erasmus. C'était l'expérience coupée du cordon ombilical avec la famille. Euh, donc on était complètement perdu. Erasmus aussi l'intérêt, c'est voir ce que c'est une, une autre vie, un autre pays, une autre culture. En 88, on n'était pas des gens qui n'étaient pas des grands voyageurs. On n'aurait jamais pensé partir euh, une génération plus loin. C'est dans la culture, quoi. He suggested um, bringing the coal because we'd coal outside for the fire, and in exchange, he wanted to be invited to dinner. That's how we met. J'ai eu la chance, j'ai rencontré, rencontré ma femme à ce moment-là, donc 
euh, j'ai eu la chance et qu'elle m'a suivi derrière et que euh, au bout de, de, 20, de 15 ans en France, on les revenu en Irlande, on ramène toute la famille, euh, femme, enfant, le chien, et on repart euh, autre oh. part. extremely enriching for children to have two cultures because it opens their mind to so many other things and all that thanks to Erasmus <laughs> it's just made Europe so small really great okay so look I think that's a, a really lovely story um, and I think again just kind of really demonstrates the impact that these kind of experiences can have on people's lives and just to point out that this is not an isolated incident this story of Pascal um, in the 2018 Erasmus study uh, impact study that I referenced earlier the figures also showed that nearly one third of students who participate in the program meet their long-term partner while being on Erasmus um, and as a result the Commission estimates that there are about one million babies that are likely to have been born from Erasmus uh, to, to Erasmus couples since 1987. Um, so that's just a very nice and very heartwarming example of the, the personal impact that these programmes can have um, and will continue to have on, on us as, as Europeans. Now, um, so far we have focused a lot on Erasmus for students and third level um, uh, and we're going to continue this thread, um, but we also want to expand on it because Erasmus is much bigger and broader than the year abroad that we often think about. Um, we're, we are coming up to our panel now uh, where we will have a student uh, representative who will tell us about our experience of the traditional Erasmus year. But we also um, have represent, a representative from the Commission DG for Education and Culture. Um, and a representative from the National Agency for Erasmus Plus in Ireland, Lergus, uh, to comment on the wider policy context, context rationale and, and objectives of the programme um, and to demonstrate the opportunities beyond what we might automatically think of when we think of the Erasmus programme. Um, before I move on to introducing the panel, um, just a quick reminder to participants that you can submit your questions for the panel using the Q&A box um, on Zoom um, and we will have time to answer them at the end. Um, and if you if you like, you can join the conversation on Twitter as well using this hashtag EU and education. Um, so let's go ahead and introduce our panel members. So um, the first member of our panel is Giorgio Gozzi Marini. He's the deputy head of the Erasmus Plus Coordination Unit in DG Education and Culture. Uh, Giorgio joins the, the European Commission in 2005 after previously working with civil society and in the public sector. Um, from 20, 2008 to 2013, he led the team responsible for the implementation of the Youth in Action programme. Um, and since 2013, he has uh, led the team in charge of implementing the current Erasmus Plus programme and conceiving the, the Future Generation programme. We also have uh, Deirdre Finley, Programme Manager at Lergus, the National Agency for Erasmus Plus in Adult Education, School Education, Vocational Education and Training and Youth. And we have Neve Lynch, uh, who is a student currently studying for her professional Masters of Education at Trinity, but who did her undergraduate at Maynooth University. And it was there that she did an Erasmus year abroad in Austria, and since then has been a very active proponent of study abroad programmes, including serving as Erasmus and Study Abroad Senator at Maynooth, um, and recently being elected for her second term as Vice President of the Irish branch of the Erasmus Students Network. So um, I will stop my screen there and hopefully we will give a chance for all of our panel members to join us by their, their mics and their cameras. Great, I can see people popping up. That's excellent. So hi everybody and welcome. You're very welcome to be here. Um, so um, I just want to yeah, sincerely thank all of you for, for, for joining us. Um, and, and I might just start with Neve um, again, just to kind of continue to contextualize this in a more individual way, the impact that this program can have. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your experience. What made you decide to do it? What impact has it had on your life since? Um, yeah, so over to you, Neve. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Neve. Um, I'm coming from Offaly, <laughs> very exotic, but I went on my Erasmus about two years ago now uh, to Graz in Austria, so it's in southern Austria, um, somewhere I never thought I'd, be, I'd end up in. 
Um, so I guess for me, I've been thinking about Erasmus um, the last few days and I have to say, uh, you're really killing me because I had a bit of a tear this morning. I was thinking of my friends um, that I made on Erasmus and I actually did message them to say um, how much I've, I've missing them recently because of the work I've been doing. But um, I have to say, for me, I didn't feel ready to finish college. So in my second year, I got the big question, do you want to go on Erasmus? Do you want to go into final year? And I've seen final year and I was like, oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I'm ready to finish and go out into the big bad world. So I had an, a little look into the Erasmus and I have to say Maynooth University's international office were fantastic. The, the guys and the girls down there really, really helped me um, to decide would I do this. Now it was funny, my parents never thought I'd do it. They're like, okay, sure. And then I booked the flight and I was gone. But um, for me, um, it was just, it was, I'm the type of person who just like jumps at an opportunity. And I was like, do you know what? If, if it's there, I'm going to take it and I'm going to go with it. And it's the best thing I've ever, I've ever done because here I am today, I'm speaking to you with some amazing speakers and I'm, I'm actually kind of a bit like shell shocked. I'm like, oh, look, little old me and um, all these other bigger, big speakers around me. And um, so it, it has really shaped the person I am today and I'm much more confident because of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I think that it's really valuable for people listening in today to kind of hear, though, that that you were just an individual who just took an interest in something and decided to do it and that it's had this such a kind of long uh, impact on your life. Um, and so that's, yeah, that's, I think, what the programme is all about. And maybe, Giorgio, I'll ask you to comment on that. So Neve shared her experience there. Is this the kind of thing that the Commission have in mind when with a programme like Erasmus Plus? Like, what, what is the objective of it? And what's the value in investing in a programme like Erasmus Plus for, 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 from a Commission perspective? Yes, well, hi, Emma, and hi, everyone from, uh, from cloudy Brussels. But I, I think the weather is almost like the same in, in, in Ireland as well. No, well, definitely, I think the program, it has been said uh, also by Jerry, by the way, also, hi, Jerry, and then other speakers, the program is, uh, is definitely a great opportunity for, for young people and not only for young people to, to really carry out important experiences, very significant experiences for, uh, for, for their life. Uh, so we, from the from the commission side, we 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 are actually uh, promoting. We we are investing a lot in this program. We think it means a lot for for many 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 Europeans. And uh, and by the way, to tomorrow is going to be a big day uh, because uh, most probably this will be the day where the council, the parliament, and the commission will finally agree on the program for the future, for the future seven years, the, the, se the next generation of the multi-financial framework. So this will be a program that uh, builds on what already exists. So we, we do not want to make a revolution. We, we are, our motto is more evolution, not revolution. So many, many of the opportunities that are now already offered uh, uh, under the program, and, and, and Jerry highlighted very well, uh, uh, some of, provided some of the examples of the opportunities that are offered, they will remain. So uh, mobility is what is uh, most known by everyone, going abroad uh, to, to study, uh, to, to, to get, uh, to do a traineeship, or, or, or simply to, to, to meet, to have a non-formal learning experience that these are all elements that uh, that will remain erasmus is not only mobility it's also about uh, a lot of opportunities for organizations and institutions to cooperate to to develop uh, uh, networks uh, but also to to come up with with new uh, learning uh, uh, methods uh, uh, ideas that at the end they they all benefit uh, also uh, young people, students, uh, adult learners in general. But the, the idea is that the, the future program will be, will, will have something also uh, new and there will be something more. First of all, the budget. We, uh, we, we, the, we plan to have almost 26.5 billion euros for the next seven years. This is a is a very very important uh, increase, uh, almost doubling the budget of the of the current uh, seven years. 
So this will mean many more opportunities for for uh, for uh, for Europeans uh, to to go abroad and learn and and do these fantastic experiences. The the other element is that we actually would like to uh, to boost a lot uh, the elements of inclusiveness. We would like the program to become more accessible to uh, to, uh, to to Europeans. So perhaps offering not only the opportunities uh, for, for students in higher education, uh, the program already offers much uh, more, but to uh, boost and invest more, for example, in opportunities for, for pupils in, in, uh, in secondary uh, uh, in, or even in primary school. This as a way to uh, also, uh, as, uh, as, uh, Jerry was saying also to break the barrier to 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 give a taste of Europe to help uh, uh, young people at a at a younger age also to to have uh, to to have a, a little taste of uh, of going abroad and and understand that this is not uh, is not something scary is not something that is difficult to do yeah, because obviously it's Erasmus uh, it is a way also uh, there is an accompanying by institutions, by organizations who help the person to be protected when carrying out uh, this experience. So I will just finish that because I think it's more of an interaction with my first uh, input, but the other important element, and I might come back to that, is that the program, in our view, should also be able to tackle the challenges of, the, of our you know, next, uh, the future. And so it's a program that is supposed to become more digital more green, paying more attention to sustainability, and I said it before, more inclusive, more accessible with different formats. Great. Thank you, Giorgio. And we will, we will indeed come back to you because there's already questions popping up that um, I'll, I'll be asking you about. But just to come to Deirdre as well, uh, Deirdre, Giorgio kind of touched on it there that the programme, you know, we, we've talked a lot about higher education and a lot, of, a lot of people when they think of Erasmus think solely of higher education, but there, it's way broader than that. Um, as Giorgio said, we have adult education, vocational education, training and others as well. Um, so maybe you can comment about that from a Lergus perspective, I suppose, what are the opportunities opportunities that are available under the strands of the program that are managed at Lergus um, and um, yeah what, what kind of opportunities are available that our listeners might be interested in. Oh well good morning thanks everyone and um, my name is Deirdre I'm from Lergus and Lergus is the national agency for Erasmus plus as well as Jerry at the HEA and the sector that the part that we're managing is the non-formal but also some formal parts of the program so that includes opportunities for young people, for people working in schools education or indeed secondary students, as Giorgio said. It can include people taking part in training courses throughout their life, so they could be of any age. And it also includes, um, I suppose, vocational education and training, which in Ireland we kind of call maybe the technical colleges. So for some people, the route into education and learning is slightly different. So for some people, they may not go to university straight after school or they may decide to start picking up new skills and learning at a later stage in their life. And I think our program um, under Erasmus Plus and also the European Solidarity Corps, which we manage, really um, provides interventions and opportunities to leverage that for people. And um, so some of the opportunities, they range from um, an exchange, going abroad for a few weeks and having an exchange with people from other EU countries, all the way through to two year projects where somebody's learning on an ongoing basis. Excellent. And I suppose just to kind of contextualize a little bit, can you give us an example of a project that maybe a nice example of a project that kind of demonstrates the types of opportunities that are available through the, the strands of the program that are managed by Lyricus? Yeah, there are so many great examples on our website <laughs> and I'll, I'll be linking yeah. to that. But um, I looked back at some examples in advance of this morning's you know, event and there was one story that struck me. Um, so under Erasmus, we actually grant funding to organizations uh, not just to educational colleges or institutions. So, for example, a couple of years ago, the Irish Refugee Council received were awarded funding. And through that program, they enabled young people living in direct provision to participate in a project that they designed themselves around um, youth migration and European, a European youth migration forum took place. So a get together of young people to discuss migration. 
and a, a young Irish girl called um, Samantha Nkube, who's living in direct provision currently, participated in that project. Now she didn't get to travel due to the limitations that living in direct provision can provide. You know, we can be it can be a, a different experience for a young person. But what she said, it was a life altering and life changing experience for her to meet with other people from around Europe to participate in this conference style of project and to get to talk and be vocal about things that she knew about and she felt she could lend her voice to. So that one really struck me. And Thank secondly, you. we have a great example of um, a young person called Amy, who was um, kind of frightening her parents by saying, I don't want to go to university or college straight after leaving cert and created a big dis kind of, uh, you know, discussion at home. But she took place in the European Solidarity Corps and she did um, a long-term placement in Moldova where she worked with people with special needs. And when she came back from the placement, she said, OK, now I think I'm ready to go to college. And she went, so she took a slightly different route to university and she's now studying for a master's in human rights. So I think it's about, I suppose, that other journey and that other style of learning. And of course, we have lots of projects and programs where people are learning at all throughout their life. And we can, we can talk about those too. I suppose for me, it just means, you know, learning and education, we think of it in the formal way, primary, secondary, and, and third level, but learning takes place all the time. And, and that's what we want to see. Yeah, and this seems to be a real bedrock of the programme is that kind of lifelong learning. So um, yeah, absolutely. And Neve, maybe you can come, because I know you might kind of identify with, with Amy, who Deirdre talked about there, how it can impact your, like that you were very active afterwards in your, you were a senator for Erasmus Plus and Study Abroad at, at Maynooth, and then now you're in this Erasmus Students Network. So I suppose, do you think that's can you see this impacting your career your your general approach to to the, your working life maybe you can comment on that yeah like it's definitely um you could nearly say give me a step up um in like my professional life so uh, take for instance I'm studying my master's at the moment and I had to do an interview and I couldn't get over it but a lot of my interview was based on oh you went on Erasmus and they just wanted to hear about that and what I learned there because not only did I pick up, say, academic and professional skills while in Maynooth, but I also picked up like really different skills over in Austria. And um, even recently when I was going for a, a job in the in the education sector, it was, oh, you went on, on Erasmus. It was all about they wanted to hear what I've learned from there. And I think the skills I got from the university in um, in Austria was very different to what I picked up what in my first two years in Maynooth. So I was thrown into a, a classroom where there wasn't the 350 to 400 people I was used to um, in Maynooth because I did the arts degree. So it was quite large classrooms. Whereas over in Austria, I was walking into a classroom of 20 to 30 people. And I was like, wow, I was like, I'm a bit overwhelmed and I have to actually take part and speak and, you know, I, I felt like I was also like maybe the elephant in the room because I was the Erasmus student, I was the native English speaker, but wow, everybody was so welcoming and I really gained like a lot. And I found when I went back home from my final year in Maynooth, my, my grades actually got, got so much better because I felt like I could, I wasn't as afraid to say speak up to my lecturer after a class. I went up and I, I start building a relationship with my lecturers and I was not afraid to take part in like group work and stuff. I was much more like confident in my academics. And then that's after um, coming twofold to my professional life now. And I feel like I'm, I'm very active, as you said now, um, with Erasmus because I think I, I have that to thank for. So I'm with, like I said, the like with ESN, the Erasmus Student Network, which is a network that is all around Europe. And we're in 43 countries and it's based in, in Brussels. But it's just, it's been amazing. And I, I want to continue my work with Erasmus and with the ESN for years to come, because I think it's so, so important. And I cannot, I cannot express it enough to people here. And I say, you just need to go do it to, to understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I think that there's, you know, there, there, you can quantify in some ways, I suppose, the academic results of it. But what's a lot harder to quantify and express is the personal impact that it has on your confidence, on your opening your mind up to opportunities there. Um, and with that, we do have a question for Jerry, which I'll come back to. But Georgia, I might just ask you to comment there, both 
I suppose we've looked at the, the personal side of it and the, the impact it can have on a person's career and education. And then from Deirdre, you know, the real scope of opportunities that are available way beyond, you know, if, if Neve is interested in having experienced this, this uh, Erasmus programme, there's a whole world beyond that that she can still continue to be involved in and conti can continue to benefit from. Um, can you tell us, like we are coming up to our next framework and everything, um, and, and you might have kind of mentioned a couple of these, but maybe you can tell us a bit more about what are the priorities for the next framework from 2021. I mean, you mentioned inclusivity, obviously, is very important. Digitalization, given the year that we've had um, with, the, with the pandemic. But what can we expect to see being the big priorities in the next, next generation of the programme? Yes, well, uh, yes, in, in, um, partly, partly I, I mentioned them. But indeed, first of all, will be there will be, a, in terms of, in terms of uh, inclusivity, inclusiveness, there will be more opportunities uh, for, uh, for, for school pupils, for example, for vets, for uh, the, the vocational education and training. There will be also uh, quite several opportunities in the, in the field of non-formal education in youth. We are planning to launch some, uh, some uh, opportunities for projects that we call youth participation activities for, for local uh, initiatives uh, at, at local level to for, for groups of young people to embark in, in, in their own in their project for the community, so to say. There will be also some uh, important novelties. Um, there will be an action called Discovery U, which will allow uh, young people to travel uh, to Europe for a uh, for a while, especially young people who turn 18 to, to discover uh, to discover Europe, uh, not only from a geographical point of view, but also from a cultural point of view, from point of view of, uh, of people. And then we will invest uh, more importantly in some uh, important initiatives that are uh, aimed to bring uh, cooperation between uh, universities and 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 vet uh, providers uh, at at uh, at another scale. So uh, the the European universities. The idea is to to have universities that get together from different countries. They and they become as a single university with integrated programs with the possibility for students who enroll in one of the branch of this university also to 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 carry out. Uh, uh, study periods in 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 the other uh, let's say the branches in the other countries. This is something very very uh, very important. And then the the element of the digital. Um, um, some uh, I, I I know that there is a quote from from Kennedy that sometimes is is, is misused that the word uh, Chinese uh, for the Chinese word for crisis means opportunity. Maybe this is not true, but I like to believe that in the sense that uh, in a moment of crisis, there's also the opportunity to think uh, about new things, new ways to, uh, to cooperate, new ways to, to behave. And th this is also very important for digital. So the program is supposed to be a, a, a program that will offer opportunities for virtual cooperation. We would like to put in place uh, platforms for, for already they exist, but also to reinforce them, the platforms for teachers, for, for youth workers, for, uh, for adult, for organizations working with, with adults to, to cooperate also virtually and to, 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 to uh, to embark into uh, interacting uh, virtually and also to develop uh, uh, ways of, of having distance learning uh, also for students and, and on on the green uh, on the green side uh, this is something that comes really really strongly from uh, from the from the youngest generations the youngest generations um, more than more than I'm becoming old, unfortunately, uh, but the youngest generations they really fear feel the importance of uh, of tackling uh, issues related to climate change, to 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 preserving biodiversity. So the program has to also uh, being being the main instrument at EU level to to for for education, training, and and youth. Uh, has to play a role there. So we are planning also to, uh, when when uh, when young 
people will, will go abroad in mobility to, to see if they can use uh, more green means of transport. For Ireland, it could be problematic. We don't ask all Irish uh, uh, students to take a boat, but yeah. still, I think it's important that, uh, that, um, that there is an idea of how to reflect a more green, sustainable method in carrying out projects and activities. Well, this is the, um, these are the um, some of the highlights. There is, there, is, uh, there is much more, but I don't want to be so boring and, and then uh, speak too much. Well, maybe I might ask you a question while I'm while I'm I'm talking to you now. That we had one from Giovanni Zaccaroni from the Brexit Institute at DCU, Dublin City University. Um, he would like to know that if um, you think that the timeline of the work program for the Erasmus Plus program will be affected by budget negotiations, um, and in particular, if you can give more information about the timeline for the the Jean Monnet program call, um, and yeah maybe anything they have to, to mention on that yes this is a this is a good question and um well i must say i'm, I'm now you know being very positive uh, by the fact that perhaps tomorrow there will be an agreement on the future program but it's true as uh, as the uh, the, um, the it was said also this morning that the the COVID pandemic and also the discussions around the the budget uh, the general budget of the EU for the next uh, um, seven years uh, has in a way delayed the adoption of the of the program for the next seven years. So there are some uh, there are some some delays and. Uh, we hope that uh, once there will be an agreement, so hopefully tomorrow, uh, then the, the annual work program of the, for 2021 can be adopted uh, rather soon. There are internal processes, so we hope by the end of the year or at the latest beginning of January. Okay. This means that, uh, that um, it will, we hoped as a commission that it would be a much more, a much smoother transition between the, this current program and the future. There will still be, uh, be uh, some, uh, some difficulties that some calls will, will be published, uh, but, uh, but with, uh, I would say, shorter time than we hoped uh, for, for applicants to, to put forward their, their bids and, 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 and their proposals. So uh, unfortunately, uh, this is not, it's not really uh, from the commission side, from DGX side, it's nothing we, we can avoid because it's really linked to the general discussions on the adoption of the, of the EU budget. All right, thank you very much for that, Giorgio. Um, and just, Jerry, just to, there was one question that came in for you here. Um, just we, 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 while we have you, we can ask you it. So um, the European University Alliances will form a part of Key, of key Action 2 in the new Erasmus um, and is seen by the Commission to be a core driver in how trans, uh, the European Commission transformation agenda for, for universities is implemented. So, however, um, it is also part of Horizon Europe and the transformation agenda there and as part of a revitalized European research area. Um, how can we prepare nationally, not just at university, to avail of um, opportunities within higher education for, for, for this? Can, is that, can you answer that? Well, I very long long question. Answer, <laughs> I, I try and answer it in, in, a, in a specific way, in a general way. I mean, if ever we doubted that Ireland wasn't, that international activities and international collaborations were something that we had an option uh, about, will the last few years have changed that radically. Firstly, we're in a, in a global pandemic, a, a global pandemic that has been designated by an international organization, the WHO. Our information as to how we handle that is guided by a European Centre for Disease Control. Our, part, our inward and outward mobility from the country is guided by activity and rules and regulations in that area. And uh, if you, our membership of the European Union is being challenged by virtue of the fact that the UK is leaving. So it impacts on us more acutely than, than any other member state. So Ireland is, a, is involved and part of the global community and international education isn't really, there, I don't believe uh, specifically in that term, there's just education. 
and education knowledge is global and we have to connect with it. There is um, our universities and institutes of technology, which will soon be technological universities. Some of that has already happened. Um, they are guided by global performance as well. We have thousands of students from all over the world studying in our in institutions. And more and more of our own students are beginning to go abroad. We, finance is a problem. Our status or our existence as an island presents a challenge and our poor command of a second language. The, we are a part of a single labour market. There are no undocumented Irish in Europe compared to the United States we are in Australia. We can move freely between any of the labour forces there. So our higher education systems, and indeed our education systems from day one, because of what I said earlier on about the, the changing face of the classroom in Irish schools is very different than what it used to be. So to be cognizant of that is, is the first step to realize that this is a great opportunity for Ireland to contribute, but that also we need to adopt and evolve. Our teachers need to be trained differently because they're teaching different types of children. Uh, our workplace is different because we have to engage and trade internationally. We sell 75% of what we produce overseas. And higher education universities, the word university itself says it all, they are universal. And Europe has to build greater collaborations because research and knowledge in that space and as well as the learning experience is key to driving knowledge-based economies like Ireland. The European Universities Alliance is, is at a very, very uh, early stage of development. And at this moment in time, it would be my opinion that they, in their current formation, they won't change an awful lot, but it's what they may become will be important. How significant the structure relationship between them will be, how seamlessly students maybe from an Irish university can move to a Belgian one, to a Dutch one, to a Polish one, and, and have that education managed without, without great difficulty, so that okay. our, our institutions and our qualifications are written. I think it's early days for the universities alliances, but it's what they may well become, and I can see only one direction for that, and I think that's towards greater collaboration and greater support nationally and from Europe. Okay, great. Thank you, Jerry. Um, Deirdre, I might, there was just a very practical question for you um, around, let me just see, can I find it here, <laughs> around what was meant by technical institutes. Um, I think you referenced that. Um, uh, what was wondering, what does Deirdre mean by technical colleges? Is she referring to post-leaving cert colleges and, for, and further education initiatives? Yeah, that's exactly institutes. what I'm referring to. And I can give an example. So for example, the Galway Technical Institute is one of the institutes that engages in Erasmus Plus for quite a quite a significant amount of time. They've sent over 800 of their students on work placements through Erasmus Plus. So that means that the students studying media or certain technical um, courses have had an opportunity to go to countries like Portugal and Turkey where they've done two to three placements and that some of the outcomes from that particular example in Galway was that the students said that they they felt more confident in terms of employability they had learned new skills as Jerry said around you know intercultural learning and language to an extent um, and the next um, kind of follow-on from this technical institute that I mentioned and, and to, to answer the question was that the staff in the Galway Technical Institute have actually begun doing these Erasmus Plus placements to traveling and exchanging practice of teaching and, and teaching in that context. Because in, in Ireland, our vocational educational training system can be somewhat different to some mainland um, mainland Europe countries. So, yeah. Perfect. Thanks, dear. Look, we're, we're coming up to time and I just wanted to give, for one thing, um, all, every, all information, there was somebody was asking here about whether people would be available to talk to secondary schools. So any of the panelists who would be willing to, to come in and, and speak to, to speak to Irish secondary schools and connect with them, we can include all of that in the follow-up. We'll also include information about LERGAS, about the Higher Education Authority, about the Erasmus Students Network, and about the commission and where people can stay up to date on the new programme, all in our follow-up. So if, it, if people have more detailed questions, um, seeing as we're coming up to time, it'll all be in the follow-up emails. So they'll be able to find out more information. Um, just very quickly, I wanted to end it on for each person in, in one sentence, um, you know, what, what would you say to people who are considering um, engaging in an EU uh, education and exchange programme? So Neve, I might start with you. 
um i guess just go for it throw yourself in there because it's really an an eye-opening life-changing experience and it's something that is so close to my heart and will be for many years like the people i've met and the the city you're the freezing a tiny bit there. Yeah, it cannot. Oh, oh I, yeah, I cannot, no, you're okay. Is it okay now? Cool. Yeah, you're grand. Okay. But I cannot express enough. Um, just to do it, whether you're in secondary school now and it's another few years for you, keep mm -hmm. on to that because it's definitely something you won't regret. Okay, great. Thank you, Deirdre. Okay, so I'm a big believer in, in peer learning. So the best way sometimes to learn about something is to talk to someone who did it already. Mm -hmm. And at Lergas on our website, which is leaorgas.ie, we have blogs, stories, and videos. Um, and of course, you can come to us and, and get the direct information too around acquiring funding. What really uh, needs input today and speaking to people who've done it is, is so motivating. So I'd encourage uh, a way to listen to stories. Great, Giorgio. Yes, well, for me, it's difficult to provide a, a suggestion for all the, there's, there's such a, you know, wide, wide audience and with different uh, expectations and different roles played in the, in the program. So for, for young people, I would say, uh, uh, don't, uh, don't hesitate to, to, to dare, uh, because uh, these opportunities are really important. They're opening minds, as it was said they help really to build confidence. And apart from uh, learning languages, uh, obviously studying, it's important, but what is important is also the personal development, how mm -hmm. the persons re, uh, are able to become more confident on, on themselves. And this is so important to then take any further step they might want to take in life. So this is extremely an extremely uh, valuable experience. And the first of a series. For, for, for teachers, I would say um, teachers are definitely, uh, again, the most important key players in, in an educational path of, uh, of young people. So also please seek the opportunities offered by Erasmus, try to use them uh, for yourself, for your professional development, because this will benefit uh, at then at systemic level, the educational system and the, and the, 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 the students, uh, uh, young people you are dealing with. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, I'm having... No worries, you're for, kind, uh, okay. For, uh, for beneficiaries, yeah. uh, for, uh, for, let's say, for organizations, institutions who are, uh, who are participating, I would... I would send a message to bear with us to have patience for this transition. Uh, mm -hmm. We would have hoped that this would be smoother. We are in cooperation with the national agencies to try to uh, provide as much information as possible, uh, even if uh, it's difficult because certain type of information uh, can only be provided once we have a, 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 a legal basis, a, a regulation in force. So, uh, please uh, try to to cope with these months of, of difficulties, uh, but uh, we definitely think that this will be a great journey in the, in the next seven years. Uh, a lot of opportunities, a lot of opportunities to develop very interesting and innovative uh, projects and activities. Okay, listen, thank you very much. And um, I, we're, we're over time, so I'm not gonna go to you, Jerry. but they do, the participants will have the, your full presentation will be forwarded as part of the follow-up. So they'll have lots of information there. I just want to really thank all of our participants, uh, Jerry O'Sullivan, Neve Lynch, Deirdre Finley, and Giorgio uh, Gozali Marini for uh, taking time to share their experience and expertise with us today. Um, I also want to thank our speakers from earlier, Jerry O'Sullivan and Deirdre Clune MEP and Minister Niall Collins for his message to us as well. Um, of course, I need to thank the, the European Parliament Liaison Office and the European Commission representation in Ireland for making this event 
possible today um, and for choosing to partner with the wheel on, on what has been a really excellent event and has been a pleasure to work with on them there's again you'll receive all of the follow-up materials links everything that we talked about today but there's some there for you um, the european parliament's website the european commission's websites in in ireland the wheel website and uh, a link to our access europe program which can help um, irish organizations around accessing and managing european funding so that's a new service that's being offered by the wheel um, and finally, a huge thank you for our attendees. Apologies for going over by five minutes, but hopefully it was a nice, engaging conversation um, that kept you uh, kept you interested throughout. Uh, thank you for your questions and for your time today. Um, it has been lovely to, uh, to welcome you all to this discussion. And we want to take the opportunity to wish you all a very lovely Christmas season and new year. So with that, thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you, Emma. See you, George. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.